Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday morning. I just finished going through all the comments from yesterday's video. <laughs> I'm like overwhelmed, but not surprised at how lovely and excited everyone is. Um, yeah, just the support uh, means so much because we are definitely nervous, overwhelmed, excited, all the things, but um, like I said earlier, when God makes everything happen so smoothly, you know it's in his plan, so I'm just going to trust all of that for now. But today, I wanted to walk you through the house a little bit and show you, <coughs> oh, excuse me, and show you a little bit how I styled it. This came from some conversations with our realtor, as well as just like some thoughts I had. But let's start in the kitchen. From someone who decorates a lot, my first instinct was to keep it really styled and decorated so it felt really homey, but actually that's not the direction as my realtor and I talked about that we wanted to go in. We wanted instead for it to feel very spacious and just open so like surfaces felt bigger and everything felt a little bit more open. So that made me minimize everything on my counters and anything that is gone is already packed for the move. The other thing that I really wanted to emphasize was cabinet space. So in my head, I was like, well, if I want them to like see and feel how big and spacious the cabinets are, I want to be really purposeful and make sure that they don't feel full or cluttered in any way. So you'll see what I ended up doing is minimizing my cabinets in a way where every single cabinet had some sort of open space to it. Sorry, the dishwasher's running. And just didn't feel overly cluttered. And in some cases even, I left whole cabinets empty. I think when you're styling your house, the goal would be to get like 30 to 40% of your cabinets to feel pretty open and empty. I don't, yeah, like this one has nothing in it. Those drawers have nothing. Even if you come over here to our cabinets, I left these wide open uh, just so people could see how much cabinet space there is and just really spent a lot of time decluttering it. Even this cabinet I just made so minimal so that it was just empty. I also wanted to make sure that when it was photographed, there was nothing that would like get in your sight line. So normally I have that huge vase here, beautiful on the daily, but when you're trying to photograph your house, you want it to feel open and not pull someone's eye in any direction. Also, I took everything out from up there so they could see that the tile runs all the way up. That was my goal in the kitchen open cabinets, no clutter, and let them realize how big the space was. Over here, I removed, you know that we typically have those two chairs there. I gave them to Danielle and I donated the center table. So those two chairs are no longer here because I wanted them to see actually how big this space is for a breakfast nook and I didn't want those tables blocking any of that. Then as we were talking, when it's filmed, every little thing is going to pop up. So if I had that all decorated like normally, that's really going to pop in a picture and I didn't want that to happen. So I ended up decluttering all of this. Once again, just keeping the sight lines really, really clear. You can see, I know the lighting's not great this time of day, but you can see how like, the sight lines, nothing is like interrupting it. The fireplace we kept really simple. And then I pulled my Serena and Lily baskets. I love these, I have them in all three sizes because I didn't want just our blankets out in an open basket. So something with a lid helped keep it really concealed. But yeah, kept everything really, look at these two, really, really simple. I moved that little ottoman that Steven uses every time we filmed or had a showing. Even in my cabinets, I didn't want them to feel cluttered, so you're, you'll see that that is super empty. I did the same exact thing for my entryway. I took everything away that was just extra and just left it really simple. Once again, just creating a really clean line into the house. 
Then you have our dining room. I actually pulled the um, extenders off the table to make it a little bit smaller to make the space feel bigger, even though it fits all on the rug if I have the extenders on. And then I even removed the chairs here so you could see through the table easily, just giving it an illusion of like a little bit more air and space. We moved our fiddly fig in here. We're so concerned about how we're going to move him. And he's doing so well here. He even has new leaves growing. We're gonna try to move him. We'll see what happens. And then with the cabinets, I took down some of the art that was here just to free up the wall space and then took the lamp and all the accessories off the buffet and just left those three pieces of art in the mirror. Kept it just really clean. The more you can open up space, the better. Think about how you can get sight lines like through your furniture. By removing those chairs, it immediately felt more open and bigger. In our pantry area, I just emptied our shelves and our pantry stayed almost exactly the same. Um, I just didn't feel the need to change it. In our powder room, I just emptied shelves and kept it a little clearer. Same with our laundry room. I just cleaned up and neatened up our shelves, but nothing major. In our gym, I didn't change anything. I just kept it the same. I got a new organizer for my Louis Vuitton bum bag. I'm gonna try to use this as we're moving and stuff. It's a bag. I have the older version that still has the flap over the zipper. They've now redesigned it because the zipper is awful on it because it catches and you almost have to flip this lip up. But I've already, I'm never buying a new one. I've also very rarely used this one, but I am determined while we're moving to like throw that over my shoulder and use that while we're traveling. But I got a little organizer that I haven't that I haven't squeezed in there yet. I don't know if I need it, but I bought it just in case. I thought it would fill the bag a little bit better. Coming out, you can actually see like just how open it all feels. Like I said yesterday, we sold in nine days and the offer was better than anything we could have expected. And um, in all aspects from the money part to inspections and closings and all of that, like it was, it was unreal, um, so we could not pass it up. But that's kind of my thought process. I very much applied the same ideas here. I just took any excess furniture out of the guest rooms. Anything that seemed unnecessary, I took out. So when I was really thinking about getting the house ready for showing, the first thing I tackled were all of our closets. There was just a bunch of stuff that I had never used, never worn, a bunch of old linens that we weren't using anymore. And I got those all donated. Steven and I set up um, a donation place that came straight to our house and we just scheduled them like several weeks in a row. I think it was three weeks total and we just literally like would put things in the garage and they would take them. I always opted to let friends take things and to donate because I just wanted it to go to a home that it would be really used and loved and needed. So the first thing I really tackled were closets and cabinets because you want people to feel like there's an immense amount of storage and if your cabinets and closets are full it doesn't feel that way so that was the first thing i did and then i did surfaces of the house i donated a lot of pieces and then really have been mood boarding what i want the next house to be and i keep asking myself like does this fit with the new vibe that we're going for because it is not going to be moody and dark my friends it is going to be light and bright i'll insert some of my inspiration pictures that i have been saving um we're really lucky. We were originally going to get rid of our living room couch because we had this custom built by our house and we weren't sure it would fit into the space. In Charlotte, if you want to live near the city, we're a half mile from like the downtown city. Um, you typically are going to get a bungalow uh, that's 1,500 square feet or a McMansion. <laughs> 
and we really lucked out the house that we got is 2600 square feet it's a little smaller than this one but still a very big size so we're actually able to take this couch i'm going to have stanley steamers come and clean it before we move it so it's like really spotless it's just gotten a little bit dirty from the dogs because mabel lays on it all the time and she is a scrappy poodle um, but it really works in the new space and vibe but everything else i kind of would go through and look at it and be like does this fit does it a match anything in any of the inspiration pictures and that's kind of how I've been um, deciding what we take and what we give away I am selling a couple of our bigger pieces so some big furniture pieces that really don't go with what we're going for is um, our big bookcase with the ladder that's from our house a couple bedroom sets and guest bedrooms um, the media stand in our living room I want to get rid of um, and a bunch of the entry or like console tables and then we're also going to get rid of this our house um, table the current buyers might be interested in buying a couple of the pieces I actually hope they take this the reason I'm getting rid of that nook table I love it however the way the new house is set up which I love this um, the dining room and the kitchen are open to each other so in my house currently the dining room is like the front room and i think that's pretty common for lots of houses however in our new home um we have three stories which once again is rare for charlotte we have a full two-car garage and then um, on the first floor we have an in-law suite then you go up to the second floor of the house and that is where like our living spaces are so like a powder room dining room um, family room, kitchen, walk-in pantry, all of that is on the second floor. And then the third floor is three more bedrooms and three more bathrooms. And um, we're amped about the amount of space we got. But I don't need this breakfast nook table because the dining room set actually goes with that light feeling that we're going for. And it's open into the kitchen like it's all one big room which will be so nice for entertaining so yeah we're gonna get rid of this table as well i hope that maybe the new buyers want it because it's like literally perfect for that spot but other than that a lot of the things will fit the one thing Stephen and I are debating, and we're going to move it with us, we just don't know based off of how I perhaps want to set up the couch in the new space. Like the big sectional might be like floating in the middle of the living room facing the fireplace that we, this coffee table that we love, but it most likely won't work because I would float the couch this way facing the fireplace. And I don't want the coffee table sitting this way. I would want it sitting this way and then the vision would be let's say like the fireplace is right here i'm gonna have two leather swivel chairs here that are like a very light tan so that they can swivel and face the fireplace and the tv um that would be the plan with a big area rug but i need to measure because this coffee table might fit the other way i just don't know we love this table though and it has like that light vibe to it. I went off on a tangent. Um, but yeah, so really emptied all of the spaces and then just really made sure that when we took pictures that things weren't like standing out because every piece of clutter you have is going to pop in a photograph. So we really just like kept it really streamlined. And then the next thing we did is once we got it all clear of clutter, we did hire a two crews we hired a cleaning crew to come through and just do baseboards and all of that like cleaning that you don't want to do because you want your windows to be really clean and um baseboards and moldings they wiped all of those down for us and then we also had a crew come and haul up the stuff that was just trash so we ended up taking all of that stuff out and just getting it rid of the stuff that you couldn't donate because it was either old or broken i mean i had stuff that i had moved from our charlotte house so it was time to let it go i mean it has now traveled three four homes and i never touched it or used it um and it was no longer in any condition to donate it 
and just trying to get all of that all cleared out are kind of the things that we did to get the house ready. And it was interesting. Um, we had several private showings and a couple open houses and every single person said like, does an interior designer live here? Which was like the best compliment I could ever receive. And also we got no negative feedback about the house. In fact, everyone absolutely loved it. At one point, the realtor who whose buyers ended up buying our home as he was leaving he spent like an hour in here because our buyers are actually not in new york state they live in fargo north dakota um on his way out he went into the ring camera because he could hear it like ding and he leaned down and he goes this is an amazing house and that same night is when we got the offer that dreams are made of um so yeah those are kind of the little things that I did to make the space feel really right and really um, ready to sell. The one thing that Steven and I have decided to do with this move is we're not really moving in cardboard boxes. We have been going in an installment buying bins. So the way I'm doing my bins is this. Any clear bin... There are two styles that I'm buying. The, these ones by Hefty. I like these in particular because they have like a little bit of a lift. So you get a little bit more space. Anything in a clear bin I know is decor. Anything with a yellow lid is kitchen and utilities. So this is like kitchen stuff, cleaning supplies, all of those stuff. They will get a label on them so I can um, really name. These are just returns that I have. And then some donation boxes. But anything in a yellow bin I know is kitchen and utilities. Then those same black bins with the yellow lids come with blue lids and red lids. I'm doing those for bathroom stuff, linens, and like upstairs bedroom things. But all decor will be in clear bins because where it is in this house, it may not end up. And I want all my decor in one place and then be able to figure out and lay out where I want everything. So that's how I'm packing right now. I'm using um, some paper to wrap things, but mostly using throw blankets that I wanna move, t-shirts I wanna move, washcloths, towels, basically keeping enough for us to use on a day-to-day, -day, but <laughs> using the others to wrap things up, which we'll be packing tomorrow. Oh. Amazon is here. We're going to be actually doing a lot of packing tomorrow. So I'll show you all my little packing things that we're doing. All right, friends, I was editing this video and we will start packing tomorrow. In the meantime, after my last day of work, I'm going to start vlogging like Vlogmas and I'm trying to think of a really fun name for it. So there was a bunch I was thinking move miss. All of the things. I had some really good ones on Instagram, but if you have any good suggestions, put them down below. And starting March 9th, we'll be doing Move Miss or something and chronicle this whole journey because I want it saved for me and Steven selfishly, but I also would just want to really share it with all of you. But tomorrow we'll be packing. So in the meantime, take care of yourself, take care of others, be kind, kindness is free, give it to everyone. Until next time, which will be tomorrow. Bye, friends.